Well, just when we thought the Eurozone fears were no more, the Euro scare is back. Concerns about the Portugal uh, rattled the financial markets worldwide yesterday and today. Eurozone trouble and the global reaction. So, is this another typical case, or are things somewhat different this time? Joining me live in the studio for discussion is, of course, our regular contributor, Dr. Kim Young Ju. So, Dr. Kim, what do you think? Um, will this be another typical case, or is it nothing like we've ever seen before? Well, the way I see it, this case of Banco Espirito Santo itself is not exactly a typical case of financial panic here, because this is not a bank run where investors or depositors get, you know, freaked out and then just run to the bank and pulling their their money out. It's just a, uh, another, not the typical case of uh, financial panic, but typical case of mismanagement of the bank itself. We're hearing a lot about these wrongdoings and misconducts, and you know, cooking up their uh, financial books and all that kind of stuff. So it's like a lack of ethics rather than kind of speculation or, or panic among the investors that we are seeing in this case. So I would say this is not a typical case of uh, financial panic. But then again, on the other hand, in terms of its uh, potential theoretical impact itself. Could be something that's typical because investors are always looking for an excuse to make a run. Uh, basically, mm. you know, when you're investing in any kind of asset market, you want to be the first one in when the prices are low, and then when the prices continues to go up, you're watching out very carefully to be the first one out. And if this is a kind of trigger for any other cases that could follow, uh, this could actually become a serious case. But for now, I th we know the situation is being managed uh, pretty okay now. And then recently, we just uh, heard a uh, not exactly similar case, but another like a panic concerns about uh, you know a Argentina, for instance, a few mm -hmm. days ago. So right now, overall global financial market is not actually up to that pl uh, point where people are looking for excuses to run. So in theory, this could be case of a trigger, but in practice, for now, we're not seeing this case becoming a trigger. So that's a little bit of relieving. Right, a sigh of relief uh, mm -hmm. by many, I'm sure. Right. Now, this week, the New York Times ran an article, mm -hmm. or carried an interesting article, on the growing fears about the excessive liquidity in the market um, worldwide. Right, right. Uh, would you say there's any link between that, uh, that excessive liquidity, and, and this, the current trouble in Portugal? Potential link is uh, pretty much there. I talked about the theoretical impact of this kind of scare as a trigger point. Indeed, uh, I think it was July 7th when uh, news, uh, Newsweek printed and then posted online about so-called everything boom. Right now, we know for the last six years, you know, central banks around the world have been increasing the liquidity uh, uh, supply of the cash into, mm -hmm. the, into the economies all around. Mm, not just the United States QE, but also uh, you know, European banks, central bank, and then China, and even Japan, right, mm -hmm. the Abenomics. So they've been kind of like pumping in this kind of money into the market for now. And as a result of it, as we all suspected, Things are going up. The prices of assets are going up. This New York Times report talked about Spain's case, recent case of bond, mar uh, bond market, especially their treasury bond in the st Spain market, offering the lowest ever interest rate ever since what, 1789? Mm -hmm. Because there's just so much cash out there that are eager to buy these kind of bonds. Sp Spanish bonds, by the way. Right, right. Right, not one of those uh, safer ones, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. And New York, we're talking about this real estate market continuously going up. Every month, the prices of these real estates going up in New York and in even France. Huge junk bond deal that was made possible in the market only because the cash supply is uh, there. So indeed, we see because of this six years of pumping in of the money into the market and also uh, not only that, but businesses all around the world. Same problem here in Korea as well. Businesses not investing. Mm. Uh, their fund whatever into an actual business investment, trying to keep the cash under their belt. These are all increasing this kind of risk all around the world. So indeed when a New York Times called this everything boom, I think it makes a lot of sense. And when everything is booming, all the investors are watching out for excuse to run and mm. any kind of trigger event. So indeed, theoretically, there is a tight link between this kind of, or not necessarily this one, but this kind of event triggering a run. Well, uh, Dr. Kim, I think you and I discussed this uh, several times extensively, the, the way excessive liquidity might lead to the financial crises. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about you know, the U.S. Bank, Central Bank, just um, printing out money, right. and it's, it's nothing that we have ever seen before. Right. So the ramifications we mm -hmm. would not be able to foresee. Mm -hmm. So we never know what's going to happen. Right. But at this time, would you say this is serious? Um, you know, I think we have to watch out. We're not talking about Portugal 
Portuguese case here, but serious meaning the overall mm -hmm. everything boom. Yeah. Uh, I think this is, in theory, serious. We have learned over decades, let's go back only if uh, we have other cases in the back, but let's go only back to like 1970s uh, when oil shock hit the world market, oil prices went up because of the oil, you know, OPEC oil embargo. That money went into New York and London market and these bankers in the New York and London pumped that cash into what? Latin America, and Latin America could not actually circul uh, uh, circulate, if you will, this capital effective way to offer in enough of return. So investors got angry or upset, not happy about it. They pulled their money out. There was Latin America debt crisis during mm -hmm. the uh, late 70s and 80s. 19, even like, let's make a big jump 1990s uh, in Asia, right? The dollar coming into Asian markets with all these excitements, but all of a sudden with Thailand uh, bad trouble and other troubles in currencies, with, uh, which Korean case followed later on, all the investors got panicked and they pulled all the dollars out of Asian market. Same thing. 98 liquidity, financial crisis. Yeah, right, liquidity right. causing this kind of crisis and panic all the time. 2008, same thing. You know, mm. all this excitement about the financial market, subprime crisis, uh, subprime, um, you know, like uh, driving up the financial market and all of a sudden people were watching out and then got scared and pulled their money out. Again, collapse. Same thing about the European markets, 2008, following the Wall Street trouble. You know, like uh, real estates in, uh, you know, pigs countries, as well as all other countries, even Northern Europe, real estate market was going up because of the liquidity and the excitements about the financial uh, market. And then all of a sudden panic and then collapse. Same kind of story uh, repeats again and again. So this time, once again, when we hear about this kind of everything boom, we have to watch out. Well, you know, uh, Korean shares today, Seoul shares mm -hmm. ended at 1988, which was down 0.7 percent from right. the day before. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, the Korean shares did respond to the Portuguese uh, trouble, I suppose. Right. And it seems they like, showed their respect. Right. Well, respect <laughs> by 0.7 right. percent. Right. It seems like Korea weathered the 2008 crisis pretty well. That's true. What are some of the uh, points that key points for Korea to keep in mind in order to deal with a potential next round of crisis? Uh, the, the answer would be too long. So. I'll be make it very uh, brief. Uh, we talked about interest rate yesterday, and just if we are thinking about any possibility of financial panic with regard to Korean market, this is not the time to cut interest rate here, mm -hmm. because we are expecting, as I mentioned, towards the end of the year, we are expecting the United States to raise its interest rate. So we are expecting some reasonable amount of capital flow out of this market. So if we cut the rate now, it will actually make the overall case worse. Keeping the rate up there in place would actually make overall situation safer for Korea. That's only, of course, if we are talking only with regard to the financial crisis possibilities. Of course, we do have all these domestic economic concerns. So that's a little bit of a different story. But for now, interest rate, we should keep it up for the sake of avoiding financial crisis. All right. Uh, Dr. Kim Byung-ju, thank you so much for today, all of this week. We will talk to you next week. Okay.